Welcome to Amsterdam and KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023. Join John Furrier, Savannah Peterson, Rob Streche, and Yu Pizka as the Cube covers the largest conference on Kubernetes, cloud native, and open source technologies together with developers, engineers, and IT leaders from around the globe. Live coverage of KubeCon Cloud Native Con 2023 is made possible by the support of Red Hat, the CNCF, and its ecosystem partners. Good morning and welcome back to fabulous Amsterdam. We are at KubeCon EU and we are the Cube, ironically. It's a beautiful serendipitous coincidence we were just talking about on the show. My name is Savannah Peterson, joined today with Rob. How you doing? I'm doing great, having a lot of fun already. I know, I feel like your energy is actually up today versus yesterday, is. which is an accomplishment. I, it is, second day, you more feeding energy. off the community a little bit? Absolutely, it's been fabulous. I'm feeding off our great guests that we have, so. Should we talk about them or should we just make them feel awkward sitting on the table with us? No, I think no. we can talk. <laughs> Gentlemen, Fabian and Andrew, thank you so much for joining us. You're both with Red Hat, you both care about community, and you're here to talk to us about KubeVert. What is KubeVert, just to start off? So KubeVert, KubeVert is a community project, right? In the, in, in the CNCF. It's There's incubated. a few of them here, yes. It's a few of them, it's yeah. so many, but we can get <laughs> to that later. So KubeVert allows you to run virtual machines in Kubernetes alongside pods, right? So it's empowering Kubernetes to not only run containers, and containers are great, right? But it's also enabling you to run virtual machines. And maybe we have some time to talk about why. We absolutely that makes the have time. Okay, yeah, cool. Yeah. I think I think understanding the value of that, because we have a lot of people who are trying to make that transition. Hmm. You know, VMware's been VMs, there's a lot yeah, going on. It's been yeah. very popular for a while and they're trying to get to microservices, but maybe they can't get all the way there. Mm -hmm. So maybe I don't is that where this really fits in and helps? Yes, I think, I mean, what we've seen in the past years, specifically with Kubernetes, I mean, Docker created the containers, right, and Kubernetes came around to make it easy to orchestrate them, is that <laughs> there's no more choice to deliver applications. And that's great on the one side because containers are so well suited, right, to improve all the workload flows that we have about delivering applications. And organizations have to choose how do we get there, right? How do we use it efficiently? And the problem is they have to choose between containers and VMs. And with Kubert, and by the way, it's not only containers and VMs, it's also that we have functions as a service, so we have Wasm, right, a new thing. Yep, so there's talked more about more Wasm yesterday here, yeah. There's more and more workload types which come up, and all of them unite in Kubernetes. And, and why is that a benefit? Because we say, once you talk about the same platform, right, you already know how the platform behaves, how you provide resources to that platform, how you manage it, how you, op how you operate it, right? Operating Kubernetes, another nice topic. And um, that's why we said, let's bring VMs to Kubernetes as well, so that all the knowledge that you already have to build up for Kubernetes, because you want to use Kubernetes, um, can be reused for VMs as well, to a large extent. Not completely, but to a large extent. So that's the core idea of why we want to run VMs on Kubernetes, or oh, we do it already, right, for a while. Yeah, it make, I think it makes a lot of sense. And, and again, I, my background, I, I was at AWS for a little bit, building services there, and I've been at a couple startups building SaaS delivered products, and when you start to look at it, the, the complication of running a Kubernetes environment or going from one Kubernetes environment to another mm. uh, really it complicates being able to build that up. And I, I think it goes to an expertise type thing where maybe you don't have the expertise for Kubernetes straight out of the gate. Is the, can this help people bridge into that? Is that? Is this a way where they can have some Kubernetes, they can find a platform, but they can move over some of the VMs that they're currently use, get used to the management frameworks around that? Is that kind of the value you guys are driving at? Yes, I think the main <laughs> point is. You can also say no. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong <laughs> okay. feel free to tell me. <laughs> well, we were talking about this last night, right? Like, it's, I, and I, I, maybe I misunderstand your question. That's okay. You're going on it, but like, it is, and one of the value that Kubert kind of provides is you, it's all in Kubernetes. You're not looking after multiple infrastructure stacks. You're not looking after virtual machines right. in virtualization and containers in Kubernetes. It's all together. So you, there is a, um, if I'm allowed to name drop, a burden in, uh, okay. in the way, which is that someone coming from traditional virtualization will have to learn Kubernetes. Right. And potentially that's a blocker for people. But once they have jumped into that, and uh, I think a lot of people here will probably agree that that's you know the future, or at least you know the present. Um, 
then they can look after their, their pet virtual machines, they can bring them over from your virtualization stacks, and then it's just the same way of dealing with VMs as you would containers or anything else. What I would just like to add Please. is I think the fact that you have to know Kubernetes anyhow, regardless of VMs, is the point right, yep. that, that makes Kubernetes valuable. Because we're saying we want to run applications, we want to run them in, a, in, in production, right? we want to make them stable, right? we need to back up, we need to, the whole life cycle around the applications on Kubernetes and operating Kubernetes. So you have to create that expertise in addition to your virtualization platform. Right? So right. you have two domains that you need to become an expert of. Complex and, uh, domains too. Exactly. And yeah. then you have interactions between them. And if we speak about the hybrid cloud, right, you have them in different places. You have Kubernetes in the public cloud, but you also have them on prems, you have it on bare metal. It's everywhere. Right? <laughs> it's everywhere, <laughs> exactly. And <laughs> with Kubert, you can at least try to reduce some of these barriers or some, you know, unify the domains to a certain extent so that you don't have to double the knowledge you need to operate these. So so where is Kubert in the sandbox incubation graduation stage right now? We're uh, yeah, very happy to say that we're in the incubated stage, and that happened about what eleven months ago, I think. Oh, on a monthly basis, I, I don't <laughs> know, it's roughly a year. Yes. <laughs> roughly a year. <laughs> roughly a year. That that's good to know because I, I think when I was in the keynote this morning and they were describing, and I think it was really good for them to go through and describe how different projects move and giving a path, a pathway. Uh, I, I was involved with Global Grid Forum, Open Grid Forum, and Open, OpenStack mm. in previous life. Right. And it was always a complication about how you move things through to be you know, from a research group to an ongoing group and sustaining group and all of these different things. Are you finding that you're getting new contributors to come in that are end users? And they were talking about that you know, 25% are end user contributors now. Uh, is Kubert one of those that you see end users coming in, or is it more more the companies like Red Hat that are sustaining it at this point? Go ahead. The, um, yeah, I mean, that's a tricky one. We've <laughs> added, in the last 12 months, we've added, uh, I'll see if I can remember, um, uh, six new adopters. Okay. Um, not all of them are end users. Some of them are integrated, some of them are vendors. Yeah. But um, if I'm, am I allowed to, to see if I can run through the list? Are you yeah. kidding me? You're allowed yeah, to do whatever you want yeah, here. We make the rules on the queue. Really? I give you permission. Good. I validate. Yes. You can name drop. You can run through the list. You do yes. whatever you want, sweetheart. All right. Tell you what. I'm even going to bring out my book so I don't uh, miss uh, it. Oh, I love that. You're allowed to have notes. You did your homework <laughs> today for class. I love oh, oh, this. this Keep awesome. going, Andrew. Uh, so we've got Killer Coder, uh, Puzzle, OS Build Operator, Trilio Vault, Deck House, and Yes, no, Tuesday, we uh, merged Castle into that list as well as an oh, official. Wow. Hey, um, that's exciting. Yeah. They're friends exciting. of the Cube as well. Oh, yeah. And they're throwing oh. a party tonight. Hopefully, we'll see you guys there. That oh. is correct. Good yeah. reminder. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah. you know. I still need to get my I, I do my homework <laughs> on the important things. You brought your notebook <laughs> out to make sure you could hit your talking points. I'm here making sure we're hitting the right parties. <laughs> so yeah. I, I just want to add to that. So, it's always. What we've seen, like with the Cubert project meeting at the beginning of the week, and we, we, we expected like 20 people. In the end, the room was over full, the people were standing on the hallway. This is great. And many of those How were... How validating was that? <laughs> it was... I, I mean, thought that was a special moment. It was a special moment. You know, it's, for me, yeah, it's the I first... Like, I feel it as a community builder just talking to you. In-person KubeCon, right, after COVID. And so it's Fine. like, oh, yeah. it's, it's, it's a huge jump. Right? Yeah. We were sitting, I, I don't know where it was. It was like, you know, there were like 10 people in the room, right? It's like five red errors, right? And five, five... I don't remember who it was, but it's so great to see it being validated. Many of those, by the way, are end users. But what we see is the barrier. So we have these big companies coming up, like we have Platform9, we've got Suzy, we've got Red Hat, we've got many uh, who contribute to, uh, to Kubert, and they are skilled, right? They know how to be not behave, but how to act in open <laughs> source, and how to yes. step up, they yeah. know how to own parts. But we see that a lot of the newcomers of end users, they need to get adjusted to that ecosystem, right? They need to understand they have a role and they have a voice, right? And we want to hear them. Yeah. But I think it's, it's our responsibility to help them to raise their voice in our community. So this, this meeting was great mm -hmm. because we know there are a lot more people out there who, who want to actually you know, learn about us, they want to use it, and we want to see how we can connect them to us. Yeah, you mentioned ecosystem there. It feels like the Kubernetes ecosystem has really matured. And, and, and it feels like dramatically over the last six to 12 months, it seems like so many different players. Do you guys agree? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. We're in a whole new ball game. And how, <laughs> so how long has Kubert been a project? We just spoke about that <laughs> last 
uh, uh, yesterday, right? Since potentially the end of 2016. Yeah, I love the interpretive <laughs> date here. Just kind of. Like. Did, didn't do it like that well, <laughs> Savannah. Um, but yeah, I think I think I was corrected yesterday. It was 2016. Yeah, two, right? uh, 2016, 2017 is when when like the first work on on Kubernetes started. And um, that's pretty early in the Kubernetes game. It is. It yeah. Is. And um, I mean, back then we were. I mean, back then we. I mean. We, we can, I come from a virtualization background. Right? I was working on Overt before, and we have good friends in OpenStack, and we're working with the whole yeah. open source Vert stack, like Libvert, KVM, yep. okay. Kumu, which is all in Kubert, by the way, today, right? So, for example, yeah. if you take Kubert from Red Hat, we, we surface it in OpenShift virtualization. The stack that you're going to use with your workload yeah. is actually the very same that we're using in our other virtualization product. Okay. In upstream, it's the very same, right? So we're using uh, Libvert, Kumu, and KVM um, as, it's, as it's produced by these ecosystems of these communities and we've been working with them since then to to make sure that these virtualization components work nice in Kubernetes but at the same time um, we actually had had a good run with Kubernetes itself I mean who remembers TPRs from Kubernetes in the very early days <laughs> like yeah. very early extension mechanisms yep. and webhooks CRDs all of this was not there and and we were able to to work with Kubernetes to see that these extension points were added so that we can be good citizens of Kubernetes and why do you tell all of that? Because yes, I think we've grown so much. Kubernetes is such a nice, extensible platform. And what we saw in the last year, I believe, is that, I mean, we have so many projects here, right? And so many companies. And we see that, that there's more collaboration, right? Towards maturity, right? To see, I mean, there are gravity points, right? On, on certain topics. We see that like the tags and the zigs, right? They reform. And we see what is, you know, what is emerging? What do we need to see? We see more stabilization in these areas. And I think Kubert connects to that as, as well. Like on uh, on Monday we had a session with NVIDIA. NVIDIA is running GeForce Now on, mm -hmm. on Kubert for, for years. Not for years, but no, actually plural, years. And um, we have customers at Red Hat running Kubert in production, so that's um, all a good validation. Uh, this event is a lot about validation, I think, and especially with the sense of community. We're all here, it's buzzing, everyone's excited. Oh, it's just great vibes. I just want to call out, you have the best mustache that oh. we've had <laughs> on theCUBE. Is, yes. is, is that a big, is, is, that a, is that a part of your look? Is that, has that been a long time aesthetic, as long as Kubert, or is this a newer aesthetic? Uh, no, this is, uh, I shaved it off in 2015, and a lot of my close friends were like, uh, what did you do? What and happened so, to your face? Uh, <laughs> whatever, you, whatever it is that you're doing, get rid of it. Um, <laughs> and uh, I recently got married, and my wife has never actually seen me without the mustache. And I almost wow. shaved it off before the wedding just to like mess with her. Um, but thankfully, I uh, didn't, or else it might not have gone through. That, that would not have been Yeah, good. I was going to say, you don't really want to chance things when you're getting close to that aisle there. That's, uh, Sometimes I'm just going to shake it up a little bit. Yeah, no, I, I love it. I, I like to call out the fashion here at, at, at Kubert, at, at, well, at CNCF and at all of our nerdy conferences, because why not? Well, while we're doing that, do you mind? Yeah. i just have a little bit of a, we've got the Kubert oh, going can, on here. Oh, you can go ahead and, you know, there you go. Yeah. show it off. Very nice. Love that. <laughs> On that plug, Andrew, thank you so much for being here. Fabian, your fabulous guest. It's been awesome. Rob, love co-hosting with you. And thank so all of you for tuning in to our live broadcast here from KubeCon EU in wonderful Amsterdam. My name is Savannah Peterson, and you are watching theCUBE, the leading source for emerging tech news.